So we're talking with nutrition, the exact same things that we discuss with workouts, but we're going to apply them to nutrition. So again, that's the load, the frequency, and the type of foods. So for load, that's going to be like your calories. How many calories do you eat? How much food do you eat? For your frequency, it's going to be like how much, like how long do you stay in these dieting time frames and how long do you eat? And then again, the type, same thing, types of foods. This is where like your macronutrients come into play. So when you want to have, those are the three variables that you're going to be looking to change depending upon not only your goals, but also just the longevity of the amount of time that you have to hit a goal. Because most of us, we don't plan for enough time, but if you do plan for enough time, then you can actually start with the end in mind so that you don't throw all your cards on the table. Okay, so the first one is going to be load. Like how many calories do you eat? How much food do you actually need to eat? And of course, that's going to vary depending upon your goal. And I'm going to tell you right now that we do have a, a calculator on our website where you can punch in your individual stats because the number is going to be individual. It's going to be different for everybody. So I'm not going to give a blanket number and we should not be giving a blanket number to our clients. So telling them to just eat 1,200 calories or 1,500 calories or 1,400 calories, that's not going to be the same for everybody. It's going to change based on their height, weight, body fat percentage, things like that. So like I said, that's going to be different for everybody. And when you do that calculator, it's going to tell you three different things. It's going to tell you what your maintenance level calories are. It's going to tell you the amount that you will eat. And remember, these are all general guidelines. They're giving you a starting point. It's going to tell you what your weight loss calories would be, what your maintenance calories would be, and how many calories it takes to build muscle because we are all shooting for different things here. So it's going to be really, really crucial about having the exact amount or a roundabout amount for your goals because most people don't realize that they're trying to maybe have a muscular look and they're not eating enough food, which building muscle requires a surplus of calories. So you're not going to be able to just do it based on the amount that you were able to do for weight loss. So you're going to figure out what your calorie level is or the calorie level for your clients and you're going to adjust it. So the same thing, you want to do it in cycles, the same way that we did with the workouts, the same way you want to have different rest periods and different rep ranges, you want to plan it out so that there is a gradual progression. You want to have periods of the year where you are, if fat loss, even if fat loss is your ultimate goal, you want to have periods of the year where you are not dieting, where your calories are still at a maintenance level. So you want to have periods of maintaining and periods of trying to lose fat. Now, if you want, if your end result is you're trying to get like this defined, toned look, then you also need to have periods of muscle building built into your plan. That means that there's going to be times where you are going to allow yourself to eat possibly in a slight surplus. Again, that's if you want a muscular look. If you're trying to get toned and you do not have muscle, you cannot tone what is not there. So you want to make sure that that's something that you're working into your plan. So have periods where you're cutting, which is fat loss, periods where you're maintaining, which is reminding your body of what maintenance is, and then periods of actual muscle building. Because once again, if you want muscle, you have to build it. If you build it, tone will come, is what I like to say. So you can't have the tone without building the actual muscle. So for... Like example, I like to give examples of all of these because like I said in yesterday's, you know, it's really easy for me to say, go do this. But if you don't know how, then you won't be able to incorporate that. So an example would be to maybe set up your year in increments of, you know, for eight or 12 weeks. So say if you're setting it up in 12 weeks, you could do 12 weeks of cut, which is fat loss. You could do 12 weeks of maintenance and then 12 weeks of muscle building. Or you could do them in smaller increments, like say the muscle building isn't as important to you, fat loss is your main goal, then maybe you want to do periods of maintenance in only one to two week increments 
because it's what we call a diet break. So if you go to the link that's been popping up there, the em2wo.com slash start, that's also in my bio, we recommend you'll get a free guide there of how to start with all of this. And one of the things that you'll notice that we recommend when you read through our stuff is a diet break. And a diet break means that you are taking a literal break from dieting every either four to six weeks or eight to 12 weeks. And that depends on where you are in your goals. So the longer you have to go, the longer your journey is, the more weight you have to lose, you can take longer bouts before you take that break. But you have to take it because your body's gonna adapt to the amount of food that you're eating. And if you never take a diet break, then you hit that plateau. So you wanna make sure that you have planned breaks every four to six weeks if you're close to your goal and maybe eight to 10 weeks if you're a little bit further away from your goal. Knowing that the closer that you get to your goal, you're going to need to take more frequent breaks. The leaner you are, the more times you have to stop and go eat at maintenance because you're going to risk not reaching your goals if you don't do it. So that's a big key. So number one, when we're talking about the load, you wanna have those periods of bulk, of cut, of maintain. Don't let the wording of any of them fool you. Cut doesn't mean that you're going to get shredded. Remember, if you didn't go through any of the bulk or muscle building phases. So have periods of time where you're eating at maintenance or above and lifting heavy enough to actually build the muscle that you want. And how many times you do that per year is gonna depend on you. But like I said, plan at least six months to a year. Do not think that you're gonna reach like your ultimate goal physique in four weeks or 12 weeks. Doing that is setting yourself up for failure. So you wanna make sure that you are not doing that from the jump, give yourself enough time. And this is also why you do not wanna start at the lowest end of the calorie scale. If you're starting at the super low end of the calorie scale and you have six months to go, then your body is gonna plateau with that amount of calories and you're not gonna be able to go any further. So you want to start at the higher end because as you lose weight, your body naturally requires less calories anyways. So you don't want to start at the ultimate low. Like if you have 100 pounds to lose, you don't want to start off eating the amount that you would need after the weight loss just to maintain. You want to start off eating only 10 or 15% less than what your maintenance is now and then allow that instead of you lowering it, like every five pounds you lose, the amount that you need automatically is lower because you're less of a person. <laughs> You've lost some weight. So every time you lose five pounds, you can kind of recalculate your estimate and reduce your calories accordingly instead of just chopping them off from the beginning. So you want to do that in increments. Maybe the first month you're only doing like, you know, a hundred calorie deficit. And then whenever that stops working, then you can increase the deficit, which may not actually be increasing at all. It may just be that you lost some weight. And so now the amount that you need is less. So you just reduce that by like 50 calories or something like that. And then you're taking the planned diet breaks, plan ahead. A lot of times it's great to be able to use these for your vacation times or something like that. Or you're going on an anniversary trip. That's a good time to strategically plan for your diet breaks. And these help your body to reset and know what maintenance is so that it can continue to react to the deficit. If you stay with your deficit, which is your like reduced calorie amount forever and ever and ever, your body's gonna adapt, you're gonna stop losing weight, and you may even start gaining weight because you're forcing your body to respond um, with even less calories. So you're putting it on a budget. A lot of this is, now the biggest thing about all this is you only need to really catch one or two of these things because you're gonna work on one until you're good at it and then you're gonna move to the next one. So it's just like when we're talking about, like so we're saying, we just talked about load and we talked about frequency, like how often you're gonna do these phases and then when we talk about macros, same thing. You're only going, you're gonna pick one to work on. So you may start off just working on your protein until you get that down. And then you would move on to working on making sure you're eating enough fiber until you get that down. So you're not trying to tackle everything at once. You want to work it in stages. So having your protein, maybe your ultimate goal is to hit 150 grams of protein, but right now you can't even get over 100. 
then that would be your first goal. You would have that in incremental phases. You would make your first goal to be, you know, if you're 85, then you want to shoot for 95. When you get hit 95 consistently, shoot for 105. And you want to keep slowly taking it up. And right there, that gives you a natural progression and it allows your body to continue getting the benefits of increasing the protein. And then when you get to the point where you're hitting your goal amount, your 150 or whatever it is, consistently and it's not a problem for you anymore then you can add in the next thing which for typically for my clients that's when I recommend them to increase their fiber intake because that's just like the next natural progression so if they get in their protein and they get in their fiber and then they're drinking enough water things like that typically they won't there they have that natural progression and a lot of the other things don't really need to change because most of the time, the thing that's holding us back is that we're so worried about lowering our calories that we aren't focusing on the, the quality of what we're eating. So actually working and taking the time to work on your macros is a great natural plateau prevention because the better you get at it, the better the results are going to be. And so when it comes to your macros which your, that's your macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. Protein is probably gonna be the most game-changing one for most people. If you don't eat enough protein and you're trying to avoid this, then that, can, that should be your goal right then and there. So just being able to do something like that will naturally help you get out of your plateau because even if you know, you're eating the right amount of calories and you're doing your workouts, but the quality of your food is not where it's supposed to be as you start changing that you're going to see differences in your physique so instead of having to try to do something drastic like okay i need to slash my calories or add in a ton of cardio or something like that just fix the food fix the food that you're eating fix the type of food that you're eating and just work to make it better and better and better because there's certain things that a lot of people are doing very early in their journey that are not only unnecessary but they are harmful. So a lot of people are using short-term methods like um, things that were meant to be plateau busters like an intermittent fasting or a very low carb approach or something like that. Some of these things are meant to be more like a, when you're at the vanity pound stage, which means like you have a four pack and you want a six. <laughs> That's when a lot of these are supposed to be put into play. It's just something very important to remember that you might be putting short-term plateau busters into play before their time because many of those things, they're only meant to work short-term. That's the point of them. They're meant to be like this, like get you across the finish line type thing, but we're putting them into play like, you know, the first leg of the journey, which means... They, they stop working very soon and then we don't have anything else left to do because we did everything else. So certain things like those, like low carb, uh, the super low calories, or even a lot of the fasted training and intermittent fasting, a lot of those things are meant to be used strategically, but not chronically. But that is the biggest thing is making sure that you get the basics down first when it comes to your nutrition and spend as much time this coming year as you need to work on it. Maybe brainstorm a list of the things that you know you need to work on, like your protein, your fiber, or eating more vegetables, things like that, and work on them one by one and tick them off the list because that gives you a natural progression to break the plateaus. Instead of just doing the same thing over and over when you hit the plateau or like I say, throwing all your cards on the table right off the bat because that's how most of us ended up here is because we're doing a lot of these super, super short-term things, but we have a long-term journey ahead of us. So if you have a journey that's six months to a year out, but you're using methods that are only meant to work, you know, at the most two to three weeks, then you're going to be very frustrated.